So we've known for a long time that children with language problems have trouble holding. We, often, we know even their digit span is often reduced and have trouble holding a lot of information in mind. And several researchers have have identified a phonological working memory problem that's that's a core component of dyslexia, for example. But what they're saying is that working memory plays a vital conduit role, enabling children to remember what they've already heard and and hold on to that so that when new information is coming in, they can relate it to what they just heard. And so what they say is language knowledge and long-term memory plays a crucial role in the function of working memory. Um, that is, more and better syntactic knowledge and long-term memory leads to better chunking of input. So the more I can hold on to, if I'm listening to a lecture, a, a teacher, you're listening to me today, the more you can hold on to what we said five minutes ago or ten minutes ago and keep integrating that, obviously the better your use of that information is. But it depends on syntax because you don't want to be processing my sentences. You don't want to be trying to figure out, now, what did she mean by that word? And what did she mean by that sentence? And what is that grammatical construction? So for young children, syntax then becomes the core to help them hold on to what they're hearing. And if they have a developmental language problem, they don't have good syntactical comprehension, then that's going to affect their long-term memory. And it, it also, according to this hypothesis, can be explained by problems with working memory, especially so that they had trouble learning the syntactic constructions and holding the information in mind. So they conclude this 2021 article with, to improve the sentence comprehension build abilities of children with developmental language disorders, we advocate an intensive language-based therapy approach that focuses on enhancing children's discovery learning, long-term retention, and activation of difficult sentence patterns. Now, you might wonder, well, why is she bringing this into an auditory processing course? Well, what you're going to see is that when children have problems with difficult sentence patterns, often that is tied to auditory processing problems. So we have a double whammy, if you will, where children have trouble with rapid auditory processing, they have trouble with that pathway, that in turn leads to problems learning morphology, learning syntax, which in turn leads to difficulties with with working memory when they're listening to oral language and it, it becomes a factor that's affecting lots of different language at lots of different levels. Literacy boosts the entire visual cortex, but what's, what's important for this course is it allows practically the entire left hemisphere spoken language network to be activated by written sentences. And I like to say that as far as the brain is concerned, um, reading is language. That's what it is. So when we're working with language and reading together, we're really augmenting the auditory language system. So understanding how auditory processing affects literacy, but also providing opportunities to improve literacy skills um, through our interventions is really important and considering the auditory processing component of that. And then finally, Dehen emphasizes that that reading refines spoken language processing by enhancing the phonological regions. And so for that reason, reading itself is improving the auditory processing. Now that it's it's a top-down approach, um, we'll talk about it as we go through, and if a student's really struggling with reading, they're not going to read, they're not going to get better, and so it's not going to be helpful. But because the two work together, you can really have a dramatic impact on a student or on a child that you're working with if you include both literacy as well as other kinds of auditory and language interventions. Now this is, I said I was going to mention, um, a free resource for all of you uh, that is wonderful if you're looking for literacy uh, specific structured approaches to literacy instruction and or intervention. It's called the Learner Variability Navigator. 
and it is available it doesn't cost anything it's open access it's available to all um, individuals who are interested in it educators therapists it is published by digitalpromiseglobal.org. So the website is digitalpromiseglobal.org. The, the organization is called Digital Promise. They have collected evidence-based approaches that look at all of the variables that we've talked about in this, in this course, and they've come up with strategies, evidence-based strategies that teachers can use in the classroom, um, but you also can use them as a therapist yourself to help the students with auditory processing disorders. You can also help the teacher to get access to these. You can, you can explain where you got them and when you're coordinating in IEP meetings or in other kinds of conferences, you can share the approaches that you're using with the educators and they can have access to it too. But look over on the right, you see it, the whole red column is language and literacy, both oral language and literacy. And all of these, if you click them off, click any one of these, like alphabet knowledge or background knowledge or decoding or foundational writing skills, you will get strategies that you can use in your therapy session with students to augment those skills. And you'll also be able to look at the factor connections. You can go back and look at the wheel and see, okay, what are what aspects are these working on and what are they helping? And if my child has primarily some auditory processing issues and language issues, I can see, am I addressing that with this particular strategy? And then the middle one, the orange one, or middle right, is uh, cognitive, uh, cognitive approaches like attention and working memory. And we talked about the Montgomery and Gillum and uh, uh, research on language disorders and working memory components to that and attentional components. And this open access website also has strategies to build short-term memory, to build working memory, to um, address auditory processing skills.